There we yeah, go. Scotch for dummies. We're live. Now we're, you know. There are two of us here it, uh, you know, in their studio, shall we say. Uh, yes. Or maybe we, we have uh, We have two other dummies on a live remote location. Uh, we'll to we'll be bring them up. Location to be determined. They're they're in New Orleans waiting for the hurricane. Today, That's right? exactly right. They're all bunched down. Wind and from what we've seen, they are they do have uh, sufficient supplies to get through the hurricane. But we will see when we get online. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Happy Thursday. Happy Andrew. Thursday. Cheers, everyone. And you know they're they're so what we were all, I was off last week because I was vacationing with family in San Francisco and had a good time there, but. I, you know, in, in it, fact, having such a good time with the whole time change thing, I space it completely missed you guys. It's all right; it happens. But we had uh, we had a lot of fun. We had a good show. Uh, this week we released the Aberfeldy Twelve. We did uh, video, which got mixed reviews well, from the dummies. It was a little uh, yeah. I mean, it's an interesting it's an interesting uh, combination there. I mean, it's like when when you start with the base of a huge blend. I mean, doers, that's their core. I mean, so. It, it was, I thought it was more flavorful than I was anticipating yes. for a, a lot of those base scotches are fairly neutral. Yeah. Uh, so they can add some other stuff. So I, I thought that it was, uh, you know, for, for what it was, it was pretty good drama for 40 bucks. And that may know, be why 35, 40 like the, bucks. I've had the doers 12 before. And, and I really kind of like that. That's a, that's a great, uh, uh, scotch to have on that you can get at, at many bars and it's a really good it's a really good base I, I, I like it I think it's a great uh, combo and that may be why um, the Aberfeldy is kind of the core of Dewar's blend and the Aberfeldy 12 is 12 years so that may be kind of the core I think the Johnny Walker base is much lighter and so yeah. therefore all you need to add is just a touch of this and a touch of that to really change the flavor or maybe the Dewar's base is a little bolder, bolder. more flavorful so so, uh, but you know, all in all, it's a twelve-year-old scotch, and it is what it is. And it's a great thirty-five, price. forty bucks. You can't really go wrong with it. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if any of you guys have tried it. We had some comments about it. We had a lot of views, so that was good. Um, I think it's one of those scotches that everybody had seen on the shelf, but hadn't actually picked up. So, we I, I saw quite a few comments this week that they were uh, glad that we reviewed that. Well, one. yeah, I mean, you figure you got all these scotches, and they're all in the sixty to eighty to one hundred dollar range, and there's one over there that's at forty bucks. I'm like. That can't be very good. I mean, if right. they're asking half the price for it, and it's why? it's it just that good. one label, and you know, so I we we skipped it quite a bit. So. I would argue maybe it's not so bad. Yeah, but we're not drinking that this evening. We're, we're not. We're drinking some cast strength whiskey. Uh, let's see who's on the online tonight. Who do we have tonight? Lots. Of, oh, Bourbon Professor's on. I just saw him. Rob G. Moose seventy six. Bud. Bud just had a message retracted, so I'm not sure what that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, Richie Z, Everwind, Whiskey Music, Bob H. Bob H is on. What do you know? Uh, we may see him later. Wheelhouse Whiskey, Bud, Richie Z, Moose, Mark JG, uh, Andrew uh, Spurl, Cartoon Face. Lost one lost cause was on early. Thanks for the yes. So this is a nice Dingston shirt. Since, Drew, nice since Drew is not here, I thought I'd represent him kind of as. Yeah, you know, probably drink his Dean's. Then. That's a great idea. That's, That's how, how that works, works right? Throw on the bar. Um, whiskey music. Uh, do we have? I, I saw some people. DF newbies in there. My gosh, there's so many people in here. Brad Murphy, That's Daniel. Good. I like Cato was people. in, but I don't know how long he's going to hang around because he's got he's in California. But California, that means he's like three hours ahead of us. I don't know. It's like seven o'clock there. Anyway, um, <laughs> I won't judge. You probably had to go to dinner or something. That's okay. Uh, James Brower, Steve A, 45 in, and Neckpour sees New Jersey style. How does everybody know that we might have some people in we, New Jersey? We should probably go to our uh, remote location. people on location and see see how they're doing. Are you guys there? Are you in the hurricane? Hit the button. There you go. Hello. 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 Can you grab? Hello. Land chart. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Are you gonna see this? Can you hear us? Get it over me. Drink that scotch. Mm -hmm. I find it. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of scotch on the table, man. We're doing good. How are you guys doing? I was in a, trying to comment and say hi to everybody. I see a lot of new faces or names on online, and I'm uh, I'm trying to catch up with them. So I'm busy typing. But um, happy Thursday, gentlemen. Cheers. Happy Thursday, everybody online too. 
I'm empty. Take that. Mm. We don't have any scotch. You don't have any can, scotch? Can you guys hear us? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. We can get it centered you permanently so you guys can talk and it won't flip back and forth so much. I understand. Appreciate it. So what you next? what's going on there? Well, we've had a, a fun yeah. day so far. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we've got a lot of Hey, guys. Good what? to be back at the bar. <laughs> We're at Bob's Casa this tonight. This is Casa de Bob. Casa de Bob. And Bob has graciously opened up. Well, we're going to open up several of his fantastic bottles that he has here. And so we, one of the things <laughs> we came up here with was like, hey, what do you got? What's going on? And so it's we've, a raid. Got, we've got some, we've got some Buna Havens, I think, and some Glendronics and some SMWSs. And I think this is a Talisker 30, maybe? Maybe. 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 What's this guy? That's Glenn Farkas. 1993. Yes. And then this is a Tamdu that you brought back from uh, your trip recently, right? Yep. Interesting Tamdu. I think Sean is definitely going to want to try to taste. Uh, mixed reviews, I think, amongst Drew and I. I think it's a really good – it's different, but um, it's good. It's just – I'm not sure about the price. It was point. 150 pounds or what's about. Yeah, for an NAS. Bucks, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was good, but like you said, but when you can get, uh, you know, the, the, the back strengths for about 100 bucks. Right. And it's only 46% ABV, so. So tonight, though, as Drew was showing, we're going we're gonna to do some comparisons, hopefully – We've got an old Brunehaven 18 and a new Brunehaven 18, and then we've got an old Glendro 15 Revival with a new Glendro 15 Revival. So the difference between those are the finishes. One is Oloroso only, and the other one is Oloroso and Pedro. So Very um, hopefully we're going to crack those open. Crap, you should just, like, bring them home. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking about killing them. Are you kidding, Sean? When there's a wounded zebra running around. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Andrew, I can't tell how many people are online looking at the computer here, but we've got a lot. And uh, why don't you run through and make sure we're, we're not missing anybody. I see Lewis and Fight for Sound. Fight for Sound, Whiskey Music, yeah. We hit most everyone. Travis, I see. Um, he is in a couple times. Matt McKean, I don't know if I mentioned. Block Mess, I didn't see him earlier. Um, yeah, that's a good crew. Lots of good comments as well. Yeah. Oh. What we got? They're frozen. Uh oh, they're locked up. I put it on mute. Um, there you so we're pouring. The, we're, we're trying to keep up. Uh, I can't even remember what review we put out this week. We I actually Albert were busy. Yeah, it was the Aberfeldy. Yeah, so I'm, I'm curious. To see what we're doing. So we started off saying we did the Aberfeldy. Remember? I heard it all. He wasn't paying attention. I was typing, you guys. Aberfeldy twelve. Is this dark enough for everyone? Hmm. You, you should not be drinking coffee this time of night. Andrew, I want to tell you, this um, SMWS, oh, my gosh, Spring Bank, amazing. Wow. It's the Cannon Barrage bottle. It's If you remember the bottles that Holy KB man. and I sent some time ago to you, and it was the super dark bottle on the top shelf all the way on the right. Yeah. That, that, it's this one. So 27.112. Um, Cannon Barrage. 54.7%. And it's just a firecracker of a scotch. It really is. It's really good. It's really good. Does it bring big funk? It does. It does. It does, especially on the kick, right? On the finish. Um, yeah. it, at first, it's like it's like it's like a sponge cake fruitiness raisins with a little bit of cherries, and oh. then it rolls back into this that spring bank funk that you're used to that, with that, you know, that whatever you want to call that sulfur funk, whatever going on. It's it's really good. Very nice. I like that. What are you guys drinking right now? Yeah, what's going on up there? We're still sipping that uh, SMWS 44.93. Yeah, so it's interesting. I, I When I first opened this, it was not – so it's 44.93. It's a Craig Lockheed, right. what, you said 63, 14%. Um, it was not my favorite. The, when it first came out of the, the sample here, it was like walking through a flower orchard or flower garden. Flower, flower garden. garden. Flower garden, flower bed. Um, it just, it just is so floral, and it, that's not what I would typically like in a scotch. It's, it is made. It's a center of space side. That's kind of the. It's very perfumey. Very perfumey. That was kind of yeah. where I was going. I added some water and it brought a lot of the perfumey down. It's probably not my favorite SMWS. Um, definitely, it, it brought up more fruit notes and, and those kind of things, which I, I prefer in a in a in the space side as opposed to the floral. So it's it's much better, I think, whiskey now than it than it was before with a little, with a little water in it. There you go. 
I, I don't think. I'm probably not going to pour another glass. There's too many other scotches in this bar, so which is but which, it's all right. Which we're oh, the Eric waits on all the way from Scotland. Holy cow! Hey, hey man, it's late there. Hello, are you getting away? Yeah, good. It's all in, man. Good for you. Can't sleep, huh, buddy? <laughs> it's only 3 a.m. He, he's not California time. Well, that's true. Oh, very true. So you know, rough, when, when we go to, we, so on the East Coast, we're we're on East Eastern time. When we go to Europe, it's like a six hour, or five hour, six hour, depending on where in Europe you go. That's bad enough. But can you imagine the eight or nine hour from coming from California? Ooh, that's tough on the body. Pass on that. Of course, if you're going through distillery, kind of okay. You get a little, uh, a little. You just know, plan on not sleeping. A little high on whiskey, and then you just go to sleep. It's all good. You just woke up to take a quig. A quig? <laughs> yeah, a quig. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> Hope you're having fun, Eric. Enjoy, I know we're Eric. enjoying hey, watching. And the by the way, event. happy belated birthday. Absolutely, my friend. It was awesome. Good shout out from Scotland. That was uh, that made me smile, man. You're having a good time, and we're enjoying watching. I enjoyed a lot of his pictures. It looks like he's having a ball. Yeah, he is doing yeah. that. Point. Alan Ward's on. Good to see you, Alan. Oh, Alan. Oh, oh KB's on. Yeah. Uh, KB? He's just on the other side of the river. Pretty much. What's up, KB? Hey, we'll going, see you tomorrow. Going back to Gregor's comment, he was asking about the Glen Goyne. Is there a better bottle for the price? Honestly, Glendronic 18 Allardyce is right up there. I'm telling you, that Allardyce uh, is my, Now, is that something? Is it gone? I can't remember. Isn't it off the shelves now? Can, can you still find no, it? No, no, no. The, okay. the, the new, the, the latest release is out. So all of the old Allardyce that had potential of being older than 18, you know, your 21, 22-year-old Wesk, those are pretty much zebras. They are, are, you know, unicorns. They're gone. Um, so what you're getting now on the shelf is all 18. Actual 18. Actual, actual 18. Right. It's not the Allardyce. I got gotcha. you. Right. That's the progress of champions, right, Sean? Yeah, damn right it is. <laughs> If you can get it, Steve, um, he's saying no. He's saying we're wrong here. So out there, I'm getting old. What? Steve, speak up. Correct us. Steve's saying um, really. okay. All right, Steve. I'm, yeah, I stand corrected. I'm a dummy. Well, that's true because the 15, the 15 just released the new new version, which means in three years you'll be able to release the 18 new version. Because the the 15. No, not correct that Mark wrote us. So Travis is saying wrong I, as well. I, I, I believe Travis will reign by that. That dude knows his Glendro. I, that guy is, he's Mr. Glendronic. Yeah. <laughs> because they, they, they just released the new 15. So the distillery's been open for 15 more years. So, wait, I, the question is then, Travis, you were just posting on the Glendronic Appreciation Society a few weeks ago asking if people had the new bottles with the new codes on the back and you were wanting to see pictures of them to see. So I thought that's what that meant. Interesting. It's okay, so Donner is saying the 2019 production is the last of the old stuff. Okay, there's where I was wrong. 2020 will be young. Four years, years old. So, and everybody words, buy them up. The message is buy the shit out of them right now, everybody. Oh, no, no, no. Don't. Just save them. Uh, we'll get our share. Don't. I already have a. Uh, Couple. You, you, you do. <laughs> yeah, don't be stingy. We'll, we'll, yeah, everybody buy them up, but don't be mad when you know I'm in front of you in the line. <laughs> <laughs> you we know cut. <laughs> hey, what's that over there, right? <laughs> so I saw. Did Sean? Did you see Alan Ward's comment about Old Pulteney? No. Um, yeah. What's he? So right here, have a private pick. He has a private pick of Old Pulteney things to you guys. What's that all about, Alan? What's going on, If bud? you beat us to a cask of Old Pulteney, Alan, oh we're going to drive to Kentucky. Oh, we're going to slap our sticker on that for you and say, this is, this is guys for dummy stuff, too. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to do a midnight acquisition of that barrel. Uh, that's right. <laughs> all I know is I'm already geared up for this scowling trip. Yep. I got my extra liver packed. I'm all ready to go. So why don't you talk about that, Sean? I heard you you and Mark were talking about some distillery stuff the other day. Where, where are we at with everything? Yeah. So Mark, Mark came over, and we had a, uh, a dram and a, a planning session. Um, it kind of went through the distilleries, kind of how we wanted to approach it, who we wanted to talk to, uh, some back <laughs> distilleries just in case we had any issues. It's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of, you know, what days are all these distilleries open? We're going to be there on a specific day. 
you know, some of these distilleries don't have, they're not open for tours. Not, not regular tours, yeah. So, you know, we're, we're rolling in with 30 people and we've got to make sure that they have the infrastructure that they can handle, you know, what, what we're asking them to do. So uh, we, we reached out to a couple of people. We got a couple of contacts for distillers that we didn't have contacts for. So that's, a, that's always a good thing. Yeah. So I, I think that we've got a really solid opportunity at, probably at least eight to nine distilleries um, to do some really cool behind the scenes stuff. Um, we're still, we've got one more distillery that we need to slot in and maybe two. Uh, so we're going to start reaching out to some people in the next couple of, of weeks and really dialing in exactly when it's going to be. Yep. Uh, but I think it's, it's going to turn out to be really something cool. Yeah. And, and the, the, so I've been working with the uh, tour masters to, to coordinate all that part. And it's really coming in at a, at a better price than I would have expected. So, you know, it, you know, we're talking probably less than 400 pounds, but that's still up for negotiation. That's just so, so that's for five yeah. days, four nights, including accommodations, tour bus, uh, and those kind of things. It doesn't make, at this point, it doesn't include food, but we're working through all that at that point. So mm -hmm. under 400 pounds for a, a, for a five day, four night trip, including accommodations. And yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's still that's still up in the air, right? It's so still, uh, well, of course it is. This is just, we're just spitballing here. It could right. be right. five hundred. It could be three hundred. Who knows? Yeah. So, right. and, and on that note, I while we've got everyone's attention, obviously we've been talking a lot about this. Hey, if if anybody that's seriously considering going on this has an idea or a suggestion or wants to have a part in in you know forming this, speak up now. We're a year out, you guys. We are still at a, a, a stage where we can hopefully change and make things. So yeah. don't hold back. If you're seriously thinking about coming on this tour with us, speak up now, let us know your thoughts and say, you know, maybe there's something that you really, you want to do it, and but it's got to include this. And who knows what that is? You know I mean? If it's fly fishing in the River Spey, God, wouldn't that be awesome, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Sean what we were already decided because one of the towns we're staying in is on the River Spey. And so Mark and I were both like, you know we're gonna get drunk and go down and put our feet in the water or something. Uh, yeah. Like I don't want to drown and be a statistic, but I also no, don't want to miss you're, out. You're on gonna that. drink directly uh, from the river. Oh, we're not gonna go on a search for Loch Ness uh, monster. I'm Come gonna catch salmon with my bare hands out of the spay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an option? I'm in for yes. it, man. It'll be awesome. Admittedly, the the tour will not include after hours at the local pubs, so that's gonna be on you guys. <clears throat> But I think we can handle that. We, yes. we can manage that. So uh, we've had a lot of, uh, so when can they lock in their, their spot for the trip? So as soon as we get the distilleries nailed down, so we've got definite dates yes. and we've got the tour company locked in on the places that we're going to stay and they've got all of their costs locked in because uh, we're hoping to keep the costs of the actual tours of the distilleries. Well, it, yeah. it, well. We're, we're working on that, but I'm, I'm hoping it's low to nothing. Yes. Um, is what we're angling for. So now, we do have a week locked in. So it's the week of the last week in June uh, 2020. We don't know the exact start day, you know, but that's the week. So if you want, if you need a pencil in a week, like block your calendars now, like ask for time off next year, whatever you need to do, block the last week of June. So, so that's the whole week. Yeah. It'll, uh, I think it's going to be a really, really cool tour. Um, we've had a bunch of people from Scotland that have contacted us that want to be, you know, uh, either go on the tour because it sounds like a lot of fun and they so want to see if they can can be included or uh, if they can meet up with us, you know, if they live, uh, you know, close to one of the distilleries that we're hitting, uh, if they can meet up for a dram or, or go on a tour with us or something. And absolutely. So we're going to we're going to put out the whole tour itinerary as soon as we have it. Um, obviously, you know, we've had some people reach out to us that definitely want to go. Um, so we will definitely reach out to those people first that have expressed okay. an interest and definitely want to be a part of it um, to give you guys first crack at it. But I mean, there's it, it is limited seating, but obviously not everybody can can make it. Anybody. Yeah, right. Right so, now, you know, we, we do need, you know, the more names we can have that will be for sure are great. But it depends if the more people we get, the, the lower the cost. You know, we're targeting probably a maximum of 30 at this point. But if we have 45 people sign up tomorrow, then we would have to maybe consider expanding it a little bit. But we'll, we'll see. And then, but that would then bring the cost down, too. Right. So. Uh, wheelhouse, the, uh, the hotel will all be in the same place. 
Um, so it, that'll all be taken care of by the tour company, the hotel and the driving and all of that stuff. Yep. Maybe some of the meals get thrown in depending on where we're staying. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but they're, they're kind of trying to figure all that stuff out. So, I mean, that's all logistics that we're hoping to get banged out in the next month or so. And then we can come to you guys and say, hey, this is the tour package. These are the dates. This is what's going on. Yeah, uh, and, and then everybody can, you know, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down and, you know, Maybe it's just four dummies driving around. I don't know. I wouldn't be I wouldn't complain because it would still be a good time. <laughs> it, it'll be a ball, man. Um, yeah. So hopefully a bunch of you guys can go. I'd love to sell out of the thing in, you know, an hour and, and have a bunch of really excited people on, be fun. on a bus driving around Scotland. That seems like a great way to go. That would be great. Uh, so the cheaper, the cheaper we can make it on everybody, the more money everybody's got to bring home good bottles. That's right. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's for real. Bring um, bags. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean it is a bus so you know if we got to fill up the aisle way uh, it's fine we'll, we'll be fine i'm sure nobody will complain because like, oh that's your whiskey all right i'll step over that because i know that's good <laughs> over like, that case man yeah. uh, i think the issue we're gonna have is everybody's gonna bring you know buy a whiskey and it's not gonna make it back home <laughs> well, that's gonna be the problem, yeah better buy some extra sacrificial bottles <laughs> right uh, <laughs> uh, so i i really think that this would be a fun inaugural <laughs> trip I'm hoping to do this every year. I think it'd be a great time, uh, but we'll see how this first one goes and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, but I think that the lineup of distilleries that we got, I, I think that we'll have uh, some good success getting in the door and doing some really cool things with them. We will be shooting videos. Yes. Um, so that was one of the other things that Mark and I are trying to coordinate with these distilleries is, you know, we, we want to take a cool tour and, and really see some in-depth stuff. And I know that the people that are going on this tour, are people that are going to have very detailed questions. You know, it's not, you know, some, some mom from some suburb that's, you know, taking the tour and then she's going to go see the sheep in the Highlands. Like these are people that actually have detailed whiskey questions. So, you know, putting somebody on the tour that actually knows what they're talking about, kind of a big deal. Yes. Um, so we're, we're going to work towards that. And then after we tour or maybe before we tour, depending on the distillery, we're hoping to get uh, a, a spot set aside so that we can do, you know, a, a quick live show on location from those distilleries um, and, and hopefully include some of you guys as well, since you're going to be there. So, yeah. So what I see is number one, you're going to have to sign a video release when you get on the bus because you're, we're going to, there's going to be video all over the place and you're going to get in some of it. So yeah. you need a little bit of that, but also the, the of, the, of the issue that with us recording with other people is that gives you time to just wander the distillery. So we'll be we'll be working, and it'll be kind of a working trip for us as I well. I think what Andrew means is we're going to distract them. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm. So hearing. if you guys can put a barrel on the truck while they're distracted, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> that might be excellent. What are you doing there? Oh my God! What is that over there? I could have sworn I saw something. <laughs> that, just sneak it out of the at the dungeon house. I don't care how old it is. We'll we'll age it here. We'll check the luggage. Can you check a barrel? I'm not checking. <laughs> Can you check a barrel? <laughs> you said? I'm going to say that the baggage fees on that are excessive. Yeah, but <laughs> over 50 pounds. Sir, sir, is this over 50 pounds? <laughs> oh, gallons, not gallons. Oh, oh sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you carrying anything flammable? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the ABV is way too high on that one. We had to check it in. <laughs> Shipping a barrel of six figures. Someone's tried it. <laughs> I love it. But sir, it's just it's my luggage. It, it counts, right? So you guys want to get into one of these comparisons on one of these two? Yeah, you guys yeah, do. No, no, no. So let, let's just ask. I mean, we don't have to get into any of them, but if anybody's interested, we do have two separate comparisons. Oh, no. oh, to not out. We I have an old Glendros, to be honest with you. I, I'm really kind of curious about that. All right. Well, we've got let's let's put these front and center and let's talk about them. I think we should pour one glass of each and then that way we can just share. I want to be able to have them side by side. Agreed. And we don't have that many glasses. So this is what we're talking about, guys. So we've got the old Glen and the new Glen. Hey, hey. Show me what? the on the label. What? Let's show me the differences on the label. There's really not much except for it says, I think one says Pedro and one doesn't. Yeah, one says matured in the finest Pedro Zimenez and, and uh, Oloroso Sherry Cast, which that's, that's, the, new. that's the new. And then the old Glendro 15 Revival, exclusively matured in the finest um, 
Spanish Oloroso. They basically are identical other than that. Even yeah. color, everything. So yes. Yeah. Really all Oloroso. What? The old was all Oloroso. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. You want to open this one? What do I have? Spanish Oloroso shit. I have the old one. I'm not doing it. Change my mind. <laughs> Too late. Oh, boy. You fucking quirky. That's a done deal, guys. They don't act. pour out. All right, let's let's see what this is up. So Travis Faircloth is on too. So I, okay. I Travis has done this before. Oh, you want to hear it? Hey, oh, that was so sweet, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let these sit for a little bit. So on on the left is the um, so, that's the new, and that's yeah, in th the, this is the new Pedro. That's the. Tuttle Hill Town. Tud, tud, what the Tuttle Town. That's actually the Hudson Whiskey up in uh, New Tuttle York. Town. You have. We're in Joyce. A Sean pour of the old. <laughs> Sorry. I like okay. my pours. <laughs> why did you? Yeah. Why did you skimp here? Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know. True. Don't do that, you don't do that, don't do that it guy. That. Well, yeah, I guess it is. Here, <laughs> Drew, fix your stuff. You've got the new, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry, Sean. Corrective pour here. Corrective pour. Ooh, totally, totally. Okay, oh, so do you have any coins on you? I, I got one. Oh, man. They're in my oh, hang on a second. I just asked if they got coins, and you said he doesn't. Well, so I, I'm, I'm buying gonna, already. I'm going to coin I'm check him. They're in my <laughs> shorts. I'm, just check them I'm buying already. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you just took your shorts off? Shh. I'm naked. That's freaky. We just lost three subscribers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kicked off of YouTube Damn. and gained ten more. <laughs> first, first impression on smelling it. Obviously, it's all Oloroso, and you can definitely smell that really deep, your deeper funk. Holy yeah. moly! You're yeah. killing me, Smalls. I think that little black cat. That's right definitely a funk on that one. Yeah, it's heavy, heavy. That, that's why I like the sweetness of PX over Oloroso. Well, you you nail it right there. The PX is definitely sweeter on the nose, obviously so far. Wow, that's a big difference. This, let this air out for yeah, a second. Yeah, let's let it sit for a little bit, for sure. So um, I'm sure Travis will help us. And what's, what's the deal? What Why did they do this? Why did they go and switch? Just oh, mixing it together via the Avat system, Matt and Pedro? or That's the question. I, I don't know. I mean, so anybody out there want to get in on that conversation? Yeah, no, um, we're asking that question. Travis, so. first one. Yeah, repeat the question. So my question was, and I'm sure Travis might be able to help us, was is that so what's the difference? Why did they switch back and forth between the old and the new um, and added Pedro? Is that because I ran out of the old 15 and I only had enough to, to kind of combine with the Pedro and like a VAT system? Or what's what's the reason why? Maybe they're, I mean, we can all, you know, theorize or take guesses, but they're running out of stock on the Oloroso uh, casks. I don't know. Um, it, it could be as easy as an explanation of cask difference, uh, cask sizes. Remember how Dan had expressed to us the difference between the Quinta Rubin 12 and 14? It was, it's not so much the, it, that they're trying to change things. It's the casks that they're getting are smaller. And, and so they're, remember he said that the, the old casks that they used for the 12s were larger casks. And now the industry is changing and sending them smaller casks. And it just had something to do with, I don't know. I, it's a good question. It would, it would be really interesting if they had a revival that was PX only. So, so did you see Ben's comments? I, I wow. was going to state that. That's interesting. And, when we, and you were just talking, I think, earlier today about yeah, he knows Rachel, right? Uh, um, actually, no. I wanted to talk to Ben about something, knowing somebody else. I'll talk to him offline about oh, that. Okay. But so, Ray, I I had gone through. I don't. Many of you guys on the channel here are fans uh, and belong to the Glen Gronick Appreciation oh, that's right. that's Society right. Facebook yes, page. That's right. Um, and the administrator of that page is named Sean. And I reached out to Sean because. Glen Dronick is obviously one of the distilleries on our tour stop, and we want to reach out to them earlier rather than later. And that is one of the distilleries that we really don't know anybody. Honestly, Sean and I, when we did our homework on this tour, you guys, 
uh, eight out of the 10 distilleries that we want to get to, we've already got a contact there, whether it's a strong relationship or at least a contact. Um, Glenn Dornick is not one of them. That was one of the two that we don't have, you know, we're, we're striking out. So reached out to Sean. We had three, but we've, we've gotten contacts now for two of the three. Right. We're working on it. We, we literally are working on it. So, um, and Ben says, so that's Rachel's style, huh? So that that's a, a, a Rachel decision. That's a master distiller decision to introduce the Pedro into the 15 revival then. And, and that's fair enough. I mean, that's her decision. That's her job. That's what she's supposed to do. Right. So do you guys have a preference? Not yet. I'm, I, I really wanted to give us a second to really get into it, Sean. I wanted to right. open it up and then say, um, honestly, right off the bat on the nose, yes, I think it's cut and dry a difference. Oh, yeah, that's a big, this is a for, big difference. Even for, even for my... Not as much. I mean, the, the old yeah, 15 yeah. is musty, old, earthy. Um, which is my, my baby. Which is great, right? I love it, man. Right. And then the, and the new one is is the sweeter, um, the, the, I don't know if you know Pedro, but it's that Pedro yeah. smell that you're used to smelling. It's it, it, I'm surprised to see how, how prevalent it is. I didn't oh, think it would be that. that yeah. I didn't think it would be that prevalent. Right. That it, it is a, it, there is that mustiness to it. Oh, yeah. Um, I haven't tasted either one of them. You know what? Let me see though. Let me check and make sure the ABVs are the same, you guys. Yeah, everything else is the same. Forty-six percent ABV. Yeah, so that's the same. Hmm. You What's should try just chugging that whole glass, and then uh, pour a second one and see how you feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. So the so I, I know Roy of Acavite did a review on this. And he was, um, he definitely explained that they are very different. There's no question they're different between the old 15 and the new 15. But the question is, is a 15 bad or is it just different in a good, very good way? Because, yeah, if you're looking for musky, you know, Oloroso, 15, old, great, beautiful. But does that, does the PX influence on the new 15 make it bad or just different, but still a very good whiskey? So I'll, I'll defer to you guys on this. Hang on. Well, I haven't tasted it yet, but I will say, uh, you, you know, we, we've, it's hard to describe. Uh, we've said funk many times in our show. And uh, this, this really, that, that smell, if you want to get a visual, you say cabbage, dirty sock, funk, that kind of, mustiness and that's what i'm getting on the funk on this one a little bit and it smells it smells like a like dirty like i'll be honest with you i think the new one i think the new one's a little bit spicier too i i mean and it's not hotter i think it's got a little bit more spice so andrew it, i hate to sound like like i'm dodging your question and saying i i honestly think they're both really good in their own way i, I mean I, I wouldn't choose one over the other. I'd be happy to have either. I'd really be happy to have both. I mean, I'm kind of envious of Bob, and I'm trying to figure out a way that I'm going to sneak these out of here. But um, yeah. Prism wallet. I, you know, damn, Sean. Why'd you have to go there? No, at, the, at the end of the day, I, I really am into that old Oloroso palette right now. That's what that's been my that's kind of where I'm at my sweet spot right now in this in this journey part of my journey. But I, I appreciate the Pedro too. Um, I'll tell you what. I, I Travis just said buy the 18 and the 21, and he thinks the 12 might even be just as good as the new 15. Which you know what? I love the 12. I drink that every day. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I I'm, I can't argue his point on that. I really can't. Um, they they are completely different whiskeys, though. There's there's no. You know what's interesting is I I tried them both now, and the old one with that funky hmm, whatever, Jim, whatever we're calling this thing, right? <laughs> Um, it, it's, the taste is not as funky, um, and you get the sheriness of it, but it's not like, it's not super sweet, right? It kind of has a little funk to it, that, that, probably that Oloroso that we're used to having. The Pedro version, the sure. Pedro Sherry one is, is, it's more subtle, um, it does have some of the sweetness to it, but you know what would be cool, I think, is almost blending these two together a little bit, because it's almost too much Oloroso, not enough over here for me. Uh, that's yeah. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, yeah. Or a little bit of all the everyone else. Everyone else is thinking. Well, you know, 
we'll be over in just a little while so we can all help share and make the decisions. Right? Okay. <laughs> well, so, so that's good. I mean, so what, what we're saying is the, the, the 15 is a different whiskey, but Rachel still put out a knock knockdown whiskey. Absolutely. Which is different than the, 50, the old 15. And that, that is explained by the, the person that signed the bottle. Sure, absolutely. And Ben's right. I, mean, I think at the end Ben's of the day, right. It doesn't matter. Anything we talk about review-wise is hopefully, even our scores, right? It's, it's just something to give you a, a starting point. It really boils down to what do you what do you personally like? It's what do you Maybe one of us, you agree with one of our tastes versus, you know, yours, et cetera. And You're about steady. Very un, unbiased, right, as far as what you guys mean. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if anybody ever has a chance to come over when we're shooting reviews, okay. <laughs> I don't, so, not thing. <laughs> do you guys mind if we put a little shot of water on both of them? No, see what happens? Because I right now, without water, Andrew, I'm gonna go. If you told me I had to pick one, I get to take one home. I'm taking the old one home. I am too. Um, How much you want? Honestly, the new one after the, my second right. taste of it is very dry on the palate. I mean, it's leaving my palate really dry, whereas the old one is leaving it. I mean, just yeah, watering and <laughs> wanting more. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Well, I guess that's not a problem, right? No, no, no. I'm good with that. So, did you put some in this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I may take the, uh, the the new 15 because I tend to like the PX cherries over the the old rose. You do. Yeah, you do. You do. And I, I would agree with that. I, I remember the old one having that funky taste to it, and I don't think that I think that kind of turned me off, to be honest with you. Um, it's, it's different, Sean, than the than what because I, I you're right. I remember having because we were talking about this today. We. We did an official review on the 15, God, what, year, a year ago, whatever. And I was lucky enough to have the newer one. I didn't know it in the Aqua Vitae Challenge. Um, and so I didn't really have a good chance to kind of compare it. But the old one, I remember reviewing with you guys, and I'm like, it didn't really knock my socks off. I mean, everybody was talking about this big, huge sherry bomb and how special it was and, you know, it was really rated really high. And I remember thinking myself that it wasn't like it didn't. You know, I didn't think it was that great. I thought it was good, I'm but getting, I'm getting a licorice out of this now. Well, it, it, the old, which isn't the Deanston 20 that you love? Isn't that like exclusively old Rosa? Yes. It is, but, but the different. There's a. It's a different. I don't know how they do it. It's different. Yeah. Con, it's the, the the flavor wheel and uh, the Oloroso. How they did it that way. I mean, there's hints of that that dirty sock, that Oloroso, if that's what we're calling it. It's definitely in different like. Uh, levels, right? I mean, this one, it's definitely more funky than what I would prefer. Whereas in the Deanston, it's got some of that Rosa, but more of the. And they're gone. No, we just talked for a little bit. But the whole taste for me personally, I like. Yeah. So I, I think Andrew would absolutely like the new one. Oh, yeah. better. A thousand percent. Because I actually do as well. So okay. it's just too much of that. I, I Again, it's not as you know off putting, right? The Oloroso is has that deeper but, funk to it. So good. Well, the, Ol but, yeah. the Oloroso is by design to be more oxidized. The the sherry itself is right. oxidized in the barrels, and that's why it gives you that kind of that older, you know, off off flavors. Whereas the PX are less oxidized. In fact, they they're different grapes, but the Oloroso is by de by um, intention oxidized, so over oxidized to create that flavor, and that's what you're tasting in there. Ben Dietrich said, <laughs> "That's kind of like you know, how it works." Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you, Ben, I didn't know it before it went out of production, so yeah. I, I didn't get a chance to meet her before she left the dance, anyway. <laughs> but you know, I will say though, no, knowing what I know with yeah. these two is is if you put them blind in front of me, I can guarantee you, without a You'd doubt, know. I would know which one's which. Yeah. Well, it's that, I, I, that you know, I mean, maybe it's a. Uh, Maybe it's psychological, right? Oh, maybe yeah. it's maybe it's I want what I can't get anymore, right? But I can tell you right now that uh, that Port Ellen bottle, uh, the new Port Ellen is, I'll be shocked and amazed if it tastes like the old Port Ellen. Um, and maybe it'll be amazing. I don't know. But time will tell. We're, we're only going to have to wait like 35 years to test that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You guys ready for some scotch in the news while you finish your glass? Yeah, go yeah, for man. it. Hit it. We'll go on you. So, I, I, one question was where, hold on. I one know. question was where in New Jersey are we? Oh. Jersey Shore. The joy, sorry, the Joy's Shore. Joy's Shore. Joy Shore. <laughs> Shore. We're going to go on mute and you guys take the news. Fair enough. All right. So, I saw this story and 
I found this one kind of, um, I don't know, a, a little subjective, I guess. So the Scotch Whiskey Association is suing a Virginia distillery for trying to pass off their whiskey as Scotch. Yeah, this is, I think, a little shady. So From they, the SWA. they filed a complaint um, alleging that Virginia Distillery Company is trying to pass off its whiskey as Scotch because they have a series of whiskeys known as the Virginia Highland whiskeys. And so they're saying that Highland is specific to Scotch, Scotch. and they, they shouldn't be able to use it. Well, and, and so the Highland brand or the Highland term is defined, is agreed to with a liquor control in the, in the United States as being a, a Scotch. So Highland is t technically, it's a region. It's an identified, accepted region. Yeah, uh, so, so it, it is. It is an identified, accepted region. Um, let's see. Uh, reserved exclusively for Scotch whiskey under U.S. federal regulations. So, you know, I on the one hand, I get it, but they didn't label it as Scotch. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly Virginia Highland. It's not Highland whiskey. It's so, Virginia Highland. I, I mean, Virginia's first. I mean, you know, it's a legal battle. So yeah. if you get into legal minutia, that's a whole thing, right? But my question is, you know, they're saying that it's capitalizing on the goodwill of Scotch, right? And, and that's why they don't want them to use it. If you are a Scotch drinker, how likely are you to think that Virginia is making Scotch now? And if you're not a Scotch drinker, why would Highland get you to buy anything? Well, and if you're a Virginian, there's a Highland and a Lowland, Virginia. There is, it's absolutely the case. I mean, near the coast, that's the Lowlands, Highlands, as you go up into the mountains, it's a real thing in Virginia or the United States. Those are very different regions within Virginia, and you understand the difference of that. So, <laughs> I don't know. But that's a great question. Diageo called White Walker Scotch, and they didn't get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't deserve to be called Scotch, did it? <laughs> so I, I don't know how many of you guys have ever seen Waiting, but I know uh, there's a few people uh, on this on this channel right now that have watched that movie. Uh, so if you've ever seen that one, he, he does a whole uh, pre-shift meeting with the staff and tells them to, to push the fish, it's going to turn. <laughs> and so I was actually in a restaurant doing a tour this week, and they had a, an 86 board. And if you don't know what that is, it's just an item out listing, right? And it had a – this was a really high-end, nice bourbon and scotch bar. I'll tell you which one it was after okay. the show. And so on the board, it had listed that they were out of uh, John, Johnny Walker Black or Double Black, one of the, one or the other – and to push the White Walker as a substitute. Oh, <laughs> man, no. Very different whiskeys. I hope people were smart enough and what? said, no, I'm sending this back. That right. Doesn't work. But I was thinking it's already turned, man. Already turned. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You might as well just throw that one out. Oh, it's it's really, really bad. Batwing, Gregor knows what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> All right. I, I have whiskey in the news. It's not scotch in the news, but it's. You know, what, 100 miles from us, so 200 miles from us. So mm. Jim Beam had a fire at their warehouse in Woodford, Woodford County, Kentucky, containing 45,000 casks of maturing whiskey. And I bet it smelled just, awesome. Just so, <laughs> yeah, just so, so you real. know, whiskey's flammable. And so when that thing caught on fire, uh, 45,000 barrels down, between 90 and one and $300 million dollars whiskey lost that is a crying shame but the weird thing is so um beam centauri owns jim beam or jim yeah jim, jim beam and they um let's say the loss of the relatively young whiskey will not impact the availability of jim beam but it could be between 90 and 300 million dollars in lost sales so i'm thinking that's a lot of whiskey for one but man all that was, can you imagine what that fire was like? So you've got all this aged oak and then you've got all that. It's like a, it's like a, a Molotov cocktail. Once those well, barrels bust. But I'm trying to figure out how hot that initial fire had to be 
to light that wood on fire. To catch the oak? Because that oak is no joke. Yeah. I mean, if you guys have ever messed around with bourbon staves, like they're thick and they're dense. The first barrel that and pops they're not going to burn if you. Got, if you got a leaky barrel in there, they're all leaky barrels. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Plus the arguably the the air in the room around that is flammable. So you know, I could go with that. I mean, I wouldn't want to be in the warehouse when it started burning. No way. But I would be outside smelling that. Uh, it is an environmental mess. I saw that uh, it killed a ton of fish. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, and then that well, the alcohol, alcohol plume yeah. heads downstream and, and it does a lot of damage. So, Which has uh, been interesting. Over the last year, there have been a, a couple of distilleries that have they've had workhouses collapse and then this one caught fire. I think that maybe, maybe Ocean needs to get in there and look at some of their uh, building practices. I, they should be collapsing. Well, apparently it is a self-regulated industry. That's weird, yeah. right? In Kentucky? That they would just be like, I'm sure it's fine. Is it fine? <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> that sounds right. No horses got hurt. Plus, so. the the most recent one that collapsed, I know it was a renovated Rick House. So they they put actually sunk a fair amount of money into it. But when you consider the amount of weight, just in the oak, let alone the liquid inside them, it it's really, really heavily lo loaded material. I'm not surprised unless you have like structural engineers looking at it. Well, they said that that was a, the main problem, like the rick houses that fell down, because I mean, some of them are actually pretty old, and they oh, don't yeah. have structural engineers going through there. They're they're kind of going in and you know shaking things, and <laughs> if everything's cool, everything's cool, I guess. So, uh, yeah. one last story, and this one is for Bud Matthews. Bud, I'm sure you're still on. Uh, so, a couple in Oklahoma got pulled over, <laughs> and in their car. <laughs> they had an open bottle of bourbon. Well, you have to. I mean, a live timber rattlesnake. Wait a minute. Where were they caught? Uh, in, Oklahoma. in Oklahoma. Going across Oklahoma, you need bourbon. They they had an open bottle of bourbon, a live timber rattlesnake in an aquarium in their back seat, and a canister full of powdered uranium. <laughs> Which the dude looks like he's on meth and... The, the woman in the car got arrested for uh, carrying a handgun and being a felon. So See, that would be like the ultimate that's quality Molotov right there. dirty bomb. I, so you, you take the whiskey, <laughs> you put, especially with cast strength, you put a, put a rag in there, you wrap, you duct tape the... <laughs> the uh, that was my aunt and uncle. <laughs> you, you, you duct tape the uh, powdered uranium to the bottle and you throw it. And then what's the bottom of the bottle top? You get the uranium. So the part I didn't get until I actually really read the story was, you know, how did the cop know that it was uranium, right? Well, the container was labeled uranium. So, and they had to call in these environmental protection people to check it. And they're like, yeah, it's radioactive. Where do you get a container full of uranium? No clue. Uranium <laughs> Russians. Unless it's, it's, it's from L from Stranger Things. Right, I don't, I don't understand it at all. But you know, whatever. Um, I, By the way, Sean, sure. thanks, for, thanks for those episodes. I, maybe, uh, they're, maybe they're making a time machine. <laughs> well, I, I do agree with Fight for Sound. It's like, okay, a guy walks into a bar with a bottle of whiskey, a rattlesnake, and a can of uranium. <laughs> Go from there. So, what do we have here, Bob? So we poured the Bunahaban 18. We've got the old. Old Booney original 18. black label 18 um, in the Scotch for Dummies glass. And we've got the newer 18, which is a blue label in this Whiskey Fest glass. The color is definitely distinctively different. It is different. The older is definitely absolutely darker. darker. Yep. But I don't Very think it really says much of anything in terms of. Uh, it's not like, I mean, it's, it's darker, but not like leaps and bounds. So, a, what's, do we have a definitive difference in, in, in mature maturation on them, though? I don't think we do. I, that's what it, I was trying to This is 46.3%. What's that? 46.3%. So that's the same. But the, the original one, when we first had got the new bottling, we opened up that and we compared it to the old bottle that, that was at KB's. I think he finished it. I think it was actually even darker than this. Hmm. So it doesn't even tell you. It, um, hang on. Exclusively in X sherry casks. That's it. It's Oloroso. It doesn't say that. I smell it. 
Well, you pass your back. <laughs> That's the new one. You're saying the new one's Oloroso? No, I think they both are. You think they both are? Yeah. There's it's whatever one you want. I don't care. I do want to take a TV timeout and say hi to Lee. I'm glad that uh, everything is going well for you. I think she's got back from Flint, putting some sandbags out there by her property. So I know they're getting a lot of yeah. Keep dry down there, you guys. A lot of rain down there. So good to see you, Lee. Thanks not, for stopping not, by. Keep dry, but not as in Scotch. Keep dry. Right. Yeah. Don't <laughs> don't be dry from the Scotch. But. That's all there is. That the new that the old one smells exquisite. This is the old. No, this that's is the old one. That's, that's the old one. Because you guys, you did the review on the new YouTube, one. New one smells pretty damn good too. <laughs> damn, I'm a sketch whore. <laughs> you guys did the review, but it was the new bottle. Yeah. All right, I'll let that sit for a minute. Let's get a little bit of juicy. Let me get down back to the comments while I let those open up for uh, a hot minute and see what's going on here. I see Richie Z's been chatting a lot. Whoa. Lee's having a, a hurricane party. That sounds fun. I bet you Mark's cooking up some catfish. <laughs> he's a catfish killer, man. That guy's always, love. He's always catching they're, fish. They're very, very similar. Yeah, they're, they're much more similar than the comparison of the two revivals, in my opinion. Let me get to the live chat here. It's actually softer. I think the That's old has a little bit more on the nose. It's hard. It's hard line. to say deeper, but it's got a little bit more on the nose than the, than the newer one, I think. But just barely. I mean, not not a whole lot. I'm, I'm I'm curious to see the taste here in a minute to see if there's a big difference there. But nose wise, they're very similar to me. Nothing, nothing that I would be like. Oh, nothing like the 15s. I guess could there be a difference? Even though that's a difference. No, no. In terms of. Even the old bottling with the black label. I don't know when we had the first bottle. Again, like I said, it was darker than this black bottle eighteen or black label eighteen. Um, I guess it, the distillers they they tend to try to keep it pretty consistent throughout. You know. So it's also different lids, different cork tops. The yeah. old says established in eighteen eighty one, and the new it was like a. Map or something. Map of Scotland? That's hard to Possibly. tell what the hell that is. Right? The island. I don't know what it is. Maybe we're not drinking enough to tell. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so let's try them. Let's guys. try them. I'm gonna go uh, in. Does anybody so, have any opinions as to to, to either? So I, I'd be curious if you, if you guys have something to talk about with the, the old AT versus the new. I'd love to hear your comments about it. But I'm gonna go in and go work. Give give it a try here. You know, KB at 44106. We, uh, we had it open before, didn't we? No. We're not gonna, We're not opening this guy, but I want to show you guys the difference between a one-liter Buna <laughs> Hob and, and a regular. Look at that beast. I mean, this is just – this is four to five. I mean, you, you grab a hold of this, and you're like, I'm ready to go sailing with this. <laughs> it's time to be a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. All right, so – Old new. This is the black Scotch. label. Let's call yeah. it. Yes. So the and they're got them pretty much the same. Like you said, it's not like the Glendronic the revivals. There is There's not a whole lot of difference, John. I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure I could probably, if I was a little bit better palate here, I could pick pick out some more stuff. But I mean, they're very they're very similar to me. Very similar. Mm. Yeah. This. I'm not. What's the ABV? The black one has yeah, it. Like the very, very, very end on, on the very finish end of the black. I got like a bubble gum. The, really, they both have some juicy really, fruit I, qualities to them. Uh, not, not a lot, but just definitely a little bit there. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm curious to see what you're thinking. I think you're going to be the same way as far as them being. They smell damn near identical. And I think they taste. I think they taste really, really close as well. I think maybe. I will. I'll give the older one a nod on the nose, just based off of my first impressions, as far as a little bit more richness on the nose. Uh, but taste-wise, I first impression, I didn't get a whole lot of difference between the two. What do you got? Anything different? I think the old one tastes well. Shit, there's that juicy fruit. 
Um, no, I was just getting ready to say, I think the old one tastes, has a little bit more of that bubblegum juicy but it flavor, comes at but, the end. but the, the new one's up. there too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not at first, it's kind of, it's almost a little bit more. Both non-chill filtered, by the way, it, it, both bottles have <clears> a, <throat> a natural color. So it, it's hard. I, 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 don't, I don't think it's a big difference. I, I had a, I had a different expectation. So when KB and I had the two bottlings, we, at that time with that bottle, that black label could, could have been at like the like um the glendronics have the year that, mm -hmm. uh, the, on the label yeah yeah it could have been a scenario like that where that was a few years older it was definitely darker than this one oddly enough i mean the color is different and so you would expect there to be a, a, and it had a very different taste to it you would expect there to be a, a bigger difference in taste i there's there's really not i really think that that on a blind tasting that that's 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 pretty damn near cool. impossible. Yeah. But I mean, then again, we've also been sitting here drinking a bunch of, uh, sipping on a, a, a no, ton of, no, you know. No, no, no. I mean, we've been. Everything's over tasting. except one other bottle over here in front of us. <laughs> Bud, you should have that. I'm trying to get caught up here. You guys were on mute there. I, we appreciate that. So, what are you guys looking at, Sean? You're still on mute. No. I Oh, there you're off. We, we just weren't paying attention to you. I know. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? That's every week. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. now, so Andrew and I were debating uh, which bottle we were going to get into, and uh, I told him uh, can do tam do. So uh, we we got into the uh, batch number two. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna say first of all, thank you so far for opening these. This is great, and I'm gonna tell you right now. So far, my favorite out of all the things we opened so far, uh, yeah, the, 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 cannon the cannon barrage is freaking unbelievable. I mean, that's it's still here. The, the revivals are good. I think the 18s. I, I remember doing the 18 last time, and I wasn't very impressed with them. Oh, I love it. You it's have good. a bottle. You have I a bottle. have a bottle, but it's okay if it doesn't. It doesn't like knock off my socks. Um, it's good. It's, it's a good, good, good quality scotch, but that cannon brush, oh my gosh, that Springbank funk is... Yeah. It's, well, what I'm hearing, Drew, is uh, I wish you guys could all taste this bottle that's been gone for six months. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> Don't you wish you got in on it when it was available? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Ben, if you're still on, cannon brush, you got any hookups? <laughs> we know you stashed some away. Hey, uh, back and forth. One you don't have to tell anybody else. Did you guys see that? What? Alan Ward said he sees one unopened bottle waiting patiently. Uh huh. Oh, oh that one? Yeah, I don't know. He, he asked about Maybe it the minute he got on. He, yeah, I think he's. he's boy, uh, it looks familiar. I'm fine of it. I'm just going to say that one. I don't know yeah. what that is. Steve wants us to get into this one, which we've got into. It? It's your, it's that Craig Lock. It's at 44106. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pass. It's good. I'm it's gonna delicious. Pass. I, I, it's other, delicious. Other things I want. But if you're, if, if this one's showing up to the dance, I'm going to wait. Solstice. Um, yeah. You're right, bud. What? Solstice. The solstice is You good. know, ironically enough, there's only like four of those in this. Oh. <laughs> this, this one, you know, okay, so. I will admit, I have not had Talisker, gosh, guys, in, oh my, okay, was, was it our 200th review? Be, was, was that when we did our, um, did we revisit our <laughs> distillers on the 200th? So our, our our very first review was the Talisker Distillers Edition, and then we revisited it on our 100th review. It was 100th, okay. Right, and the, the problem was is at the time when we started four years ago, we didn't know enough to actually pay attention to the year of the distiller edition. And so I'm pretty sure it was a 1997 distillers edition. The bottle that we re-reviewed on our 100th review was not a 1997. That's true. That's true. Oh, no, no. oh, it's open. Dun, dun, oh, no. dun. Is that officially considered open? Once open. Uh, it's open. Once the seal, <laughs> that's it. It's right. done. Can we go? Travis Fairclaw says the uh, Game of Thrones bottle also. We, we did a here. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We didn't do it. That's true. That's That was the last one we did. And that was back in probably December, guys, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's been a minute since we have Talisker. But 
my point is we've, we've done talus where you like it, but it really goes back to Sean, the gosh, that tasting we had back in the beginning, right up at, was it Vine Table? Yeah, a channel. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah, that was, that was pretty epic. Right. And going through that whole tasting, we went everywhere from, I think, I think the storm just came out, I think. And we went from the storm all the way up to the 30 year. I think it was a 30 year. Um, and which one was it that we didn't like? Was it 25? The 25 is the one that we don't like. And I've had it like three times and I don't like it. Yeah. So the 30 is good. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little excited to, to try this again. Easy. I almost dropped a little bottle. Which one did you say wasn't good? What year? 25. 25. Okay. So Whiskey Music wants to know what Talisker you should start with. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> an open bottle. Andrew says yes. An open bottle. Yeah, I've tried the whole line up to 30 a couple of times and it, tasting them back to back, they're all really good except the 25. Weird. That is I don't know what it is, but I don't like the 25. It is what it is. But the 30 is excellent. <laughs> you guys are going to love it. <laughs> He's telling mom it's funny. Um, so, what should you start with on Talisker series? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, the storm's good. Storm. I think a storm's a good injury level on Talisker, the brininess. I got to be honest. This 30, I, and I think this has everything to do with the age, is nowhere near as briny as the younger Talisker. This is, it just. Little legs on it. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the, the saltiness, the brininess that you get on the nose anyway is, is just. It's it's been sucked into the barrel or something. It's gone. It's, yeah. it's I mean really Talisker is definitely when we you know there's we've it had is a, soft. we've had a few briny whiskeys out there before, and but Talisker is always my go to for the, the briny scotch. Not yet. What? No. It's yours. Wow. I, yeah, I'm gonna let that guy air out. I mean, it's thirty year old scotch, so let, let's give it let's give it its fair shake. He's not he's not listening. No, I like Bob does it. That means we need to be in. We need to wait another thirty minutes before you taste it. No, I'm not going to wait 30 minutes. I'm just going to uh, wait long enough to see KB freaking flounder here and be upset that he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? In terms of – you think Talisker, at least I think Talisker, heavy pee. Uh, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I don't, I don't, weigh, I don't weigh Talisker with heavy peat so much. Honestly, well, it's, for, been, for it's not a, been a brine. It's been a, a salty – that they just get that, uh, okay. that ocean on it. Think, think, about a, think about if you're – Close your eyes. Think about a, a whiskey, and then the sea era. sitting at the beach. Yeah. Sitting at the sea air. Yeah. What do you call a mildly informed yet inebriated dummy? <laughs> uh, Mark? No, I don't know. <laughs> Let's go with that. That's uh, that's <laughs> yeah. Andrew Red. Thirty years mellow. I'm sorry. Out, I guess. <laughs> Thirty years mellows everything out. That's good. Yep. That's gonna mellow any peat you have in there. Oh sure. yeah. That extra five years, huge difference. Quit looking at it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's like, go. <laughs> it's not getting any younger, man. Well, that's, good. That, that's, that's a brine. Andrew, you would love that. It's, it's brininess. It's that. <laughs> oh. Mm. Wow. O okay. Yeah. You want another glass? <laughs> There's um there's a hidden little gem about halfway through the finish that just comes out of left field and punches it. You don't quite I, expect. It's almost a, a, a fruity, I don't know, like a soft strawberry flavor. But the peat is there. It's just a very subtle peat because of the age. It's not your and you would expect that, Andrew. I don't think you would expect it to be some you know punch in your face peat. You on that. But I don't like oysters, but this is a perfect oyster oh, combination. What's right? the ABV on it? What is the ABV? I don't on know. It? I, I don't think it's that high. Well, it's thirty years old, so forty-five point eight, yeah. which I it think is impressive taste. for that age. I yeah. mean, get it for thirty years in Scotland, right? I mean, honestly, you, you when you get into those old, old, old bottles, it, it it's more about you know, is she gonna keep? You know, we gotta freaking pop her before she hits forty. <laughs> forty, you know, thirty-five years at forty percent ABV. That's the tough part, right? Right. Uh, nice, Richie. Nice I think it drinks right. really well for a forty-five percent too. I don't. It, it's not hot. It's not weak. It's. <laughs> I gotta tell you, to me, I think it's delicate. It's, it is very delicate. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, it's it's light. It's it's got this the scotch you know and love. It's got a little bit of the wood finish, and then it's it's a briny sea shot sea side. Uh, I, I honestly think it, it shows its age. Yeah. It really does. I. It, it's one of those you you got to sit there and really. 
enjoy it for what it is. I get it's, seagulls out of it. Seagulls? Seagulls. Yeah. What, what did you call them? Seagulls. You called them bats. Oh, sky rats. Sky rats. <laughs> That's what you called them on the boardwalk today. The seagulls are flying around. No, when you smell it out, you're like, oh, I'm at the beach. <laughs> So, Andrew is making fun of us in the background. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, what I like is what, what Richie Z said, Talisker is Pete in a bikini on a Scottish beach. Well, a 30-year-old in a bikini is much more mellow than a 21-year-old or a 20-year-old. So, so <laughs> probably right. Yeah. Very, very, very keep, going, keep going with this analogy, Andrew. Your wife watches the channel quite frequently. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I'm talking mellow. <laughs> 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 Bud says you're delicate, Mark. <laughs> I love you, Bud. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, it's after eleven. All righty. Well, Thanks for having us, guys. Okay. Appreciate is, you having us on your show. Is, is it our time? <laughs> hey, so what else do we have to open? You know, everybody. I don't. We've got a lot. I mean, we don't. Do we have to get off here? Uh, no. Hang on. We don't need to. I guess we could leave it on you guys and let you guys find some good whiskey to open and and discuss it. What other comparisons do you have? <laughs> Just keep opening bottles, I guess, and we'll just hang out. Uh, I mean, I, I'm disappointed. Sean's ready to go to bed. You got, you've got a bunch of uh, SNWS there in front of you. You haven't even touched them. So, oh yeah, uh, that's not true. We have Earl open. Yeah, I'm working on it. I got a Boone Haven 18 and the Talisker 30. Come on now. And the Cannon Garage. Keep going. Garage keep going. Keep going. Look, look everybody. Pour some more stuff, Andrew. Let's go. Dang. That's right. You're not tired. Come on. Come on. Yeah, stand. You know, I'll, I'll give you my share of that signet. Open it up. They just oh, want to like that. I thought he already drank that. I, I think he took it home, didn't he? No, he no didn't. it's behind you. I didn't take it. That was a good boy. Keep going. I was late, so we need to keep going. There's nobody live. I know. Telex has moved. Telex has moved. So let's make that. Yeah, let's let's let right. it Telex has moved his channel time. I think he's doing lives on what did you say? Tuesday? Somebody Tuesday. Tuesday. I think I think it's Tuesdays at like uh, I don't even know nine maybe. There you go. Yep. Thanks. Tuesdays. Uh, Telex is live on Tuesday. So you're gonna do it. Do it. Is it not open? Well, that was anticlimactic. That was it. <laughs> oh wait a minute. Nothing. What are you doing? At least fake it. Make the noise with your mouth, Andrew. Come on. All right. We're gonna Just go. Save me a sip if you can. Right, just a little yeah. bit. I have some upstairs. We got some brand new. We're going to hit the signet in a little bit. You guys keep talking and open up 30 year old bottles. Yeah. We'll, do, we'll finish the signet. I got one okay. of those. Don't worry. I got an unopened one. Yeah. The Tamdu is the. Say, um, if you open the signet over those bottles, you're a crazy man. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> And Lee, the Tamdu is um, a special one that, that Bob brought back from his visit. It's a it's a travel retail only. Grand Reserva is what I think it's called. Yeah, it's actually it's a new release. I think it just came out in eighteen, and that's the first edition. Of not out of, out of normal for Tamdu, I think it's yeah. it, it's it, it's forty six. 3%. So the ABV is not high. It's low. It's actually it's pricey too. Yeah, it's about 150 pounds. So we'll call it 190 yeah. bucks. It's good. US. It's good. It's good. But not compared to the batch strength that they no, produce. No, I, I would I would not put that against any of the batch strengths. They would all they all even batch four would, would win in my in my book. It's value maybe not the best because it's of the still price good. But so it's not, delicious, but it's just they actually price. had two tamdus at at the airport. They had this one and they also had a 14 year old. But apparently the 14-year-old was, uh, I think, it was an old Russo finish where where this, I think, was exclusively um, matured in Oloroso casks. Oh, yeah, well, at Oloroso mm -hmm. cask matured. I don't know. It's vague. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. What's where? I'm, I'm still this? working on this spoon I have them, but you guys are going to kill this? that talisker. So I'm going to oh, I gotta get to it. Kill it. We've got a whole bottle. I gotta get to it. <laughs> it's good. I want. I, I need to pour one and let it and let it sit for 15, 20 minutes. Pour another. Get to the it. other glass. Thanks for opening the tally. Thirty. Alan Ward says. What time can I come over? I don't know. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Where is? <laughs> if you're in Jersey, how far it's, are you? It's only about ten hours for you, Alan. Come on. I, I think when, when you guys were at Allen's, you had more than thirty year old whiskey. So I'm saying you'd probably owe him. I probably you're absolutely right. Alan definitely rolled out the carpet and, and opened some whiskeys and shared some. There was one 
Ever since I uh, went to his house, I always want to go to antique stores and look for old booze. No there. kidding. I'm, I'm telling you, that that was a great trip. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing it again with Alan soon. I mean, that was the, it was awesome hospitality. Great, great a variety of just crazy antique stuff, Sean, when you were getting ready to go there. I mean, it just it does make you want to kind of start going to some of these estate sales and stuff and be like, ooh, what's going on in that cupboard right there? <laughs> Mark Brett has his glasses on time to get serious. Oh boy, yeah. It's well, like, get a little bottle, so he's got a he's got a dial yeah. in. Lee Lee was just saying that she got the, the Glen Glen 18. You know what? If you want to actually do a pairing, pair that with some dark chocolate. Yeah. Don't mind if I do. Mm, let that so show. you guys need to keep drinking because people want us to keep going. Yeah, so you gotta, you know, marathon this. Let's go. I don't no excuses. Where's Molly? Molly hasn't come down. You haven't heard you say anything about Molly. I know. She came down at eleven o'clock, but you guys wouldn't shut up. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Throw her a pretzel and get it over with, okay? And then, and then, and then, and then. way down, man. She hadn't heard the tank of the glasses. She knows it's not over yet. Ah, DF newbie right. says he's not going anywhere. Keep it up. <laughs> Picked up a right. uh, so, can of scotch. Hey, Clark. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure how to take that. Yeah, I don't know. What, what, what do you mean, there, bud? Because <laughs> we don't recognize you. You take out the glasses and you're Superman. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. Clark Kent. Or you look strong. What's my kryptonite, huh? What's my kryptonite? <laughs> we have all your kryptonite. <laughs> you're kind of a dork, and there's no way you're Superman. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I make fun of my tramp stamps, Sean. <laughs> Some things are best left off the internet, brother. <laughs> oh, you guys, man! Everybody, there's probably 50, 60 people. If you guys knew what you know, what we make fun of each other for <laughs> there's, there's a lot of love in this group. Really, I mean, and yeah, we're not we're not not to make fun of ourselves. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know. So when I was at when, about a month ago, was that? at the the dummies bar and it is a different experience once that camera is turned off it's like you know snacks are just breaking out all over the place and then it's like soak you know, it up <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well not only that then you know then, then the uh very free you know able to speak much more freely yeah and and bud is absolutely right old forester is definitely the kryptonite uh it, nah and you you power right through old Forester. You just think it's your crib tonight. Man. We have Tom R's not on, right? I haven't seen him. And, you know, the guy's gotta do what a guy's gotta do, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have fifty two people watching still, so you know okay. I think if we want to have some good content, let's keep going. If you got some good good uh comparison or discussion on Rich I mean, wants you guys to to open something, pour something behind you. That's good. It's not like there's not something good I behind got, you. I'll tell you what, we're, we're going to call for you. Andrew, I want, I want you to pour that Ed Rutter, that, that rum at the top there. No. That's just going to make a reference. That's what I was asking about time. No, time rum. Was, so I had some rum last week at a um, distillery up in Michigan. And oh, I want that. It wasn't, it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sean, I want that. It wasn't that good of rum. I'm telling you, that rum up there is such an amazing rum. It, it is. is so good. Bud, be nice. It is true, but I think we've got another bottle of cigarette <laughs> now that we need to try because, you know, I'm a chocolate kind of guy, and this is all about that chocolate rum, chocolate malt. I'm it a chocolate is. kind of guy. I'm just going to have the wounded zebras on the bar. This is that 30. Oh, here's it. It's right here. Yeah. On for I like that. Hey, hey, Andrew, have, have I told you how much I love you lately? Just want to let you know. Yeah, well, as he finishes it, look at that. Oh, no, that, 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 this, that, this is totally this is totally a move on their part. That zebra is dead. I didn't pour it. It was it was sharp. <laughs> He's like, I didn't know those guys are drinking fine. <laughs> hey, that I'm Tosker thirty. I'm gonna put a signal. You just double tap it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> exactly. Sean said, kick the chair off and eat that bitch and double hang it, man. I'm out. <laughs> we'll save a three pound uh, core for you. <laughs> Do you need to open up the king? So, oh, um, no, no, no. Oh, what's the best type of glass to have a dram in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> my recommendation is a bottle. You don't, you don't, you don't, yeah, you don't, need a, you don't really you'll, be fine. Yeah. you'll be fine with the bottle. Walker. I was gonna say sippy cup. <laughs> 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 I don't have to worry about spilling it if I drink. 
<laughs> All right, so we're gonna do we're gonna do a review with Sean in the shower. <laughs> yes, yes, hey, what's going on, guys? Goodbye, me. We we have one more video to do before that. You don't get too much nose on it when you do a sippy cup, but the the palate. Right. I think, hey, Sean. I think we need to do like a montage of different clips of you know the 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 bidet story, the <laughs> the uh, oh. the Dalmar story, the sippy cup story, maybe a little whole package. We. Yeah. Oh my God! If we can do the story, that would be amazing. Hey. Yeah, Tom Moore story. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to the, the, the Duke of Rio kind of scenario? Or we, what, I've what got, are we doing with that? I've got a. We're gonna, oh my gosh! I've got so much bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Half the stuff I have is probably well, not Tom PC. Is so. newbie is still a she. I can't see pictures, newbie. <laughs> what? I'm, oh, I'm, I don't know. I can't tell. I can't see the profile picture. It's so small. Um, Tom, Tom is on. Okay. Tom is on. What are you drinking then, newbie? Speak up. I'm not too kidding. What the hell? Scott, Lee's meeting Steph R. That's awesome. And Nola next Thursday. Going to be a blast. Yeah, let's just say Steph R is on vacation and she, uh, I need to talk to her, but she needs to get off of vacation. <laughs> so she's going to see you. Uh, yeah, if you're going to see her on vacation, boy, you better be ready because that girl can party. No, she's fun. Steph is she's awesome. Great. Awesome. She's a great person. And I, I'm sure that you guys will be fine, but maybe leave bail money somewhere. Yeah. Well, maybe. You might be lucky enough. <laughs> no. You poured more. No, I did not do so, that. Um, that I, honestly, <laughs> I, in, in all honesty, I'm not, not to keep, keep talking about this, this Talisker 30, but it, it really is a night and day whiskey against the younger Talisker's. I mean, it, it if you poured a young Talisker up next to this, you want you you wouldn't guess that they were the same distillery. You really wouldn't. No. They're they're completely and utterly I, the age has really mellowed it out and really same. brought it down. Um, the the brininess okay. on the nose is completely not there. It's it's very delicate smelling. So is Talisker more a, a briny than it is? I think so. It does have oh, yeah. a, 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 there is okay. peat involved. So it's not, in, but it's you not don't, as heavy peat. No, so I, like I've not had one yet. Like, no, 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 no. Before, before, before is definitely a different animal itself. It's it's more iodine than anything else. The Talisker is to me, it's always that wood briny finish, and especially in the briny side, the seaside. I mean, it, it reminds me. It's the most probably the number one scotch I would I would kind of think Sean, about you're right, seaside dude. with the thirty is just. I mean, I can't knock the 25 because it's not here, but the last couple times I've had it, I've, I've knocked it with you. <laughs> it's it's just, there's something off about you it. You threw it out then. Is that what you said? You threw your bottle out? No. Oh, well, we, didn't, we, we, don't, we don't throw anything out. <laughs> well, Sean threw the White Walker out. I got, what, what three bottles do, or three glasses do you have going right now? You got the Talisker 30. What else? Two, two, two Talisker 30. He's a Talisker 30. He's got two of those. Oh, okay, you're just breaking up. So, and this is uh, Benny 18. Hang on a second, this is gone. All right, so so we only caught the two Talisker 30s and then the Bunny 18. What, what was between that? Bunny 18. This, this one's like the Canaan Barrage. SMWS Canaan Barrage. Canaan Barrage, yeah. Well, fellas, we're going to go and show the thing because it's really, really good. I had forgotten how good this glass is. It is. What, that's the thing? Wonderful, huh? The yeah. signature that what you're talking about, absolutely. It's got such a unique profile. There's no way you can't. Uh, I it, don't. I don't recall the signature. I don't remember. Oh that. my god! I could pull you a glass right now, and you'd be like, "Let me tell you all about." I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. <laughs> well, if I had any shame, I'd feel it. So it's, it's all the sweetness and lightness. If you had any shame, you'd feel it. Al, <laughs> you seen one of these before? Ooh. Yeah, what's in my pocket? Ooh. Goose Hound's gonna open a compass box, stranger and stranger, in two days for his birthday. Well, first let's stop and say happy birthday, happy birthday Goose Hound. Yeah, man. Hope you have a wonderful day, brother. Um, and good on you. You're gonna enjoy that. It's it's because it's not a scotch. So let's remember. So we're not so gonna go for that cognac 1960 vintage 1965. No, no so we're not. Let's no. just All right. Bob has a bottle of. Uh, Cognac that he bought for his 50th birthday um, in 2015. In 2015. Now I'm even older. And he wants to open it, but we're not letting him open it. It needs to be saved for a uh, 55th. An occasion, you know, whether it's your 55th, whether it's the day you were. This is an occasion because I don't I, want to open it alone. 
No, you're not going to open it alone. We'll we'll come back. We'll I'll come just back. open the damn bottle. Okay. <laughs> no. No. All right. If the, if everybody shows up for Whiskey Fest in New York in, the, in December, then I'll bring it. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Everybody, you guys all hear that? Everybody. Wait, you guys all hear that? If you show up for Whiskey Fest, Bob's open. Bob's open it for everybody. A 40, how old is this? They're all going to be in New York. There you it's go. A, it's a 50, after 1965. Yeah, a 50 year old cognac is going to be opened up if you come out to Whiskey Fest. Bob's got you. Along with the Balvenie 30 KBS. Because that's his birthday oh. in December. Do you know that? He well, KB that. doesn't know that, but no, he knows he, it. he's fine with it. He knows it. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's fine. <laughs> you can overpower him. We're going to go feed the pretzels and uh, finish up this signet. So uh, we'll let you guys do your thing with that Talisker 30. All right, All right. guys. Thanks for having us. Roger that, man. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Happy Thursday night. Everybody who, who joined on, it's great to see everybody. Having fun. Um, Appreciate it. If you've got suggestions about the tour, don't forget to spook up now because we are really in the works. Other than that, gents, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Cheers, Bob. Yeah, Thank you so much for the invite, my friend. Gee, I was here like I was on the live show what like twice in a month. Uh, you <laughs> you're a regular. See you guys. Regular man. Nice. Right, cheers, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya.